Hello everyone and welcome to another video and podcast from Elitisilian Fantasy. This is a recording version of um, our uh, stream of Game Week 9. We could not go live uh, for technical um, reasons, so apologies to that. Instead, we are recording offline and will be shared with you as soon as possible. Uh, Jakob is joining me today ahead of Game Week 9. Jakob, tell me, how are you? I am good, Karam. I'm uh, just back from uh, vacation and... Uh... Amazing. Excited to look forward to Game Week 9. Yes, uh, we, we've been all absent in Game Week 8 preview. Um, we've been all traveling. Uh, I'm still traveling as well, but managed to uh, connect here. Um, uh, we've, there are a lot of things have been have been happening in the last two game weeks, especially in my in my team. Especially um, personally, I activated double captain in game week eight with uh, Junker as a captain, Singrenade as a vice captain. That's the intention. So I can't tell that the chip was successful because otherwise I'll be blanking with Junker at one point. And this week um, I activated the uh, <laughs> rich uncle ten minutes before the deadline. When I figured out that I can't even field seven players in my team, um, so let's let's go ahead and preview the game with eighty quickly. Uh, I'll go first. Uh, managed to get uh, forty nine points from a rich uncle. Um, a double clean sheet wipe out for Stubbick. Hunch Olsen with a yellow card as well. Sandberg three points. Uh, Eden Hinstead was the only Rosenborg pick that came good with a clean sheet. Pretty lucky, I would say. Ten shots conceded, five on target. Um, you've been saying, Jakob, as well, there should be a penalty for start. So uh, I think we will take it and run it, but we will discuss Rosenborg as well. Uh, Tito, Tito Lano uh, was the pick in my rich uncle. James, 13 points. Uh, amazing pick. Uh, he's not in my original team, so I'm glad that I um, took him in. Uh, the rest is just blanking. Um, instead, I took out Pellegrino, who scored, Daland with 8 points, um, and um, who else retain, has retained some points? Yeah, Makani, he's on my bench um, with, seven po with 7 points. So it's like a mix-mix for the free head, but my original team would have scored 35 points. So I'm 14 points up in the deal, I can't say it's not usually uh, a failure. Uh, Jakob, uh, I'll go to your team as well. Um, tell us about your team. I think, uh, yeah, 46 points minus four. So tell us about your team. Yeah. Um, didn't use the rich uncle chip. Uh, I used one transfer, no, two transfers. Um, and unfortunately, one of the transfers was uh, because I was in Oslo, so I had to do the transfers before. We knew the lineup for Budeglim, so I transferred out Berg and transferred in Hauge. Oh. Um, and uh, Berg scored, of course, and uh, Hauge was sick, so he didn't even play. Um, but uh, my defense uh, for the first time this season is the, the place in the uh, team who scored the most points, Makani mm. and Nakim. And Makani with the penalty save, Nakim with the penalty actually mm -hmm. uh something to look out for if he is on penalties mm -hmm. although brockman was subbed off before the penalty uh dalan uh with eight points Ulvista not expecting much and with booked out uh or on the bench for Starbeck and gregor's out he came in off the bench jorgensen was my barrack replacement three points mm. uh Sinkernagel didn't deliver a six points pellegrino uh, continuing his good form. Mm. Uh, Husta, I needed to start because Hauge didn't play. Uh, I was hoping maybe Ran would rotate, but uh, he came on and got a yellow card. Mm. The Buyang type of substitution. Uh, Junker captain, I uh, thought, at home. He uh, There is where he scores his goals. Didn't yeah. score this time, only four points, and Berlin. Disappoint with Rosenborg in attack, only two points. Yeah. So uh, yeah, forty-six points and a grey arrow. A grey arrow. That's that's all right. I think that's I jumped. Right. Yeah. I jumped um, four hundred places uh, up to eight hundred and seventieth. I think overall, so not too bad. Um, but yeah, uh, we've got a few topics to discuss. We should mention before the team uh, preview, but I rushed it for some reason. So uh, there are topics to discuss in this video. Jakob, uh, tell us, um, what are we going to talk about? Yeah, the one topic we already have discussed a bit, mm. the rich uncle chip. Uh, you talked us through yours, and we know some other managers 
yeah. also used the chip because of uh, a lot of injuries. Mm. Um, we'll talk about uh, Belvin James or other expensive assets. Is are they too expensive for what they are delivering? Yeah. Uh, we will of course talk about our game week nine plans and cap. Um, we will look at some fixtures, maybe some teams to target mm. uh, to bring in players from, and we will talk a little bit about ownership and which players you maybe want to bring in if you want to climb the ranks. Yeah. Uh, before we start uh, preview, uh, reviewing Game Week 8, I want to give a shout out to uh, Jonas as well, who activated the Rich Uncle. So when I saw that, I, I felt like, oh, my decision was not totally weird. But instead, he captained James. So that's a very cheeky one with a brace. A uh, few few differential options like Shala and Castro and Midfield did not work out, but probably uh, mine did not work out as well. So I think the difference, the main difference between me and and Yunus was pretty much the captaincy. I picked Singlenardi as a captain. That's one point versus thirteen, um, and uh, and of course Kitulano double double Rosenborg defense. He bet on the defense more than the attack, which uh, came successful. So just I want to point out that the rich uncle was not. A totally weird decision uh, it was really my need because i had no defense we will see at the end of the video my team how it's shaping up and i have a lot of problems i have a hospital at the back line so um yeah uh, just to give a, that shout out let's go and uh, preview the games uh, um quickly and we start with a very difficult win to boot glimpse with a wonder goal of load probably the goal of the season uh, along with Pellegrino from previous game, but Pellegrino scored as well. So, um, how did you find Bodo Glimt without Hager um, from the highlights? I would imagine that you were away, so you did not watch a lot of the game time mm. of this game week. So, what do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah. as you said, I was away, but I was watching uh, the Viking game, but I have seen some highlights of the other games, of course, yeah. and uh, I saw some tweets as well that, how you guess, probably maybe been the best player for Bootcamp this season alongside mm. the other up front. So when they take one out, of course, they will struggle to yeah. create a lot because that left side of Bootcamp is where they create their most of their chances. Um, yeah. But also, we saw earlier uh, with um, when Bootcamp faced Sarsborg, they were very low and then Bootcamp, they won 2-1 then as well because ben, but they struggled to, to create a lot. and. Christian Sun with their manager, they also like to uh, mm. play how they, in which team they faced. So they also was far back and uh, hit them on the counters. Uh, so Pellegrino scored. Um, but yeah, the two goal scorers for Budglimt, Berg and Lud. I don't think you would predict <laughs> that before the game. No. Uh, and he brought in two assists. So mm. yeah, uh, but for Christian Sun, they had the up. As well now, yeah. We've got two bonus points. He is very important for them. That's also maybe a reason why Buddy Glimpse struggled to create a lot. But mm. as a uh, winning mentality, they still win and are still up top on the table. Yeah, I, I really I I saw a lot of parts of this game, uh, a lot of parts of this game, and I really liked Job how he. I've been like like last season. He's been the power horse in the midfield, running a lot, getting the tackles. Uh, he, he got a yellow card at the beginning, but yes, he managed to get two bonus points as well at 5.0. Uh, currently, there are some attacking. Uh, players at this price like Salitros, but if you really get rid of him, um, I really like Diop as a fifth. Mm -hmm. Uh, midfielder who uh, is kind of doing a bird thing at the beginning, but of course, uh, it, it looked like I did not get affected too much when Bird destroyed the goal. Uh, probably not many managers, especially the active ones, are using him as a as active player, or he remains with the bench because many have switched to Hager mm -hmm. or Saltness or one of those further forward players. Um, so it feels like that the dead teams already or or many of active managers have benched birds so that's good news at least for us uh, i thought i thought that the focus would be on single uh, in a, in a creativity so i thought he might be involved in every action of Buddha. that's why i still went for him as a captaincy but overall they did not create much and Pellegrino could have another goal could have had another goal mm -hmm. uh, like a shot near the post um, so that was very close. Pellegrino is just superior, superior pick, I would say, for his price. I think he is, he is a one of the must-on players, I would say, uh, 
whatever the fixture is, he's been mm. really phenomenal. And I think he dropped over the uh, knee injury already. Uh, moving on to Molda, a big win against Viking. And it's one of those weird games, of course, sorry for the Viking loss. Um, mm. From a fantasy perspective, it's very annoying for Akram captainers to have been involved in an assist from five goals. That reminds me of Kevin De Bruyne a week ago when, yep. when City won 5 0. Uh, also, he was involved in one assist. So tell us about the game. Um, and then briefly, James, um, is he more favorable now than Uhi in games of mm. ten, game time? Yeah, uh, as I said, I watched this game on a. Mm. There is like a pub in Oslo where all the Viking fans come together and watch. And uh, I have some sources for Viking, and I knew that they were going to play five at the back and uh, mm. try to park the bus. But when you can see the penalty after, I think it was four minutes, and they score, the plan goes out the window, and yeah. it didn't seem they, like they didn't know what to do, and more they just on the counter and on just yeah. control the game from there on. Um, so yeah, they could have scored easily more. Viking should have scored, so um, and they missed the penalty. Hyland missed again. Linda with two penalty saves. Wow, in three, three games now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's impressive. Uh, a lot of different goal scorer again. Hussein, uh, like uh, underdog in Malta because he's like I think he's seven mil or something. Mm. The, everyone goes for the likes of Lech and Eichem, but I don't think Hussein is far away from uh, Eichem in his score. And he has been playing a lot and seemed to get in the box a lot. Uh, yeah. So maybe a good differential. Uh, Ulan Andersen shows how good his set piece is, mm. and uh, Vingo scored and Ketulano assists. So if you have like uh, one of the fullbacks from Molde, they will get you some uh, offensive points as mm. well as a uh, clean sheet, but we never know who will play, of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, as you said, James, two goals, a penalty and uh, another goal. Um, this also reminds me a bit of Manchester City with Aguero yeah. and Jesus, at least before now, Jesus is in better form now, but uh, when James plays, you know he will score at least one. And mm -hmm. he has the ceiling of scoring maybe two or three in a game. Yeah. Uh, so he will, if he if he starts, he will probably get a higher score than Aikam in most of the games. Well, the score uh, a lot of goals in. So mm -hmm. uh, and it seems like he only got like the last eight minutes or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so it looks like James is the first choice and will play even if they are winning. Uh, will stay on the pitch for a while. So yeah. yeah. Good choice. Yeah, uh, Uhi have missed has missed also a big chance at the end of the game. Like it was really mm. kind of an open goal. I would say could have had put it yeah. easily. So that that feels like he's out of confidence at the moment. Um, uh, speaking about Akram versus Hussein, there is already a question from Andy Nash who um, left a question on Twitter about uh, whether it's worth downgrading Akram to to mm. Hussein. Um, and and use the money to, to spread it around. Um, mm. Let's touch on it because it's it's really a tricky one. Um, my thinking is that Akram is is too good to to be downgraded. Uh, if if you want Hussein, I think you will have to double up in midfield because Akram is highly on. He's he's capable of a double digit haul in any yeah. game week. Um, so having having two game weeks with low scores does not really mean that we should um, still. Um, downgrade him. Uh, that's my feeling about it. What, what do you think? Yeah, it's hard to tell because we say low scores, but if this was a player who was like seven mil, eight mil, we would mm. be happy with. I think his last two scores are nine and six points. Um, yeah. But for twelve million, of course, you could use the money elsewhere and maybe have two players who will have the same score as him together. Mm. Uh, as you said, he has a high ownership. A lot of he will most likely have over 100% ownership in most of the game weeks because a lot of people will captain him as well. Mm. And he will have those games where he gets like two assists and a goal and three bonus points. Yeah. Then your rank will go like really. So I, I agree with you that Hussein maybe will be like a, a second option, but I don't think you can afford. Uh, you could go without Akram and have mm. Hussein, but then you have to have Lakey James, I feel like. 
Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, we'll have to one of those two. We'll go to a section where we speak about James as well. Um, yeah, about the fullbacks, though, uh, I still feel that I, I did not have much luck with the defense. So whenever I got to Gregerson, he never showed up. Peterson, one point in three game weeks. Uh, Kitulano, it might be just come back to the bench once Hayden is, is back, mm -hmm. but we don't even know when is he back. Uh, there is a lack of information about the injuries this season. Um, so I, 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 I don't know if I should go to Kitulano and then all of a sudden, Hagen is back and he loses his place. It feels like yeah. a transfer waiting to happen. Wingo is sadly classified as a midfielder, not not a defender. So you cannot get him. You will not benefit much from the clean sheet points, I would say. No. Um, quickly moving on to Sandy Fjord, uh, uh, the only goal in the game from Foss, who also gets uh, one bonus point, one of the 4.0 legends in the game. Now, uh, Castro disappointed as well, but Sandy Fjord was solid in defense. Uh, not much to take apart from Foss um, back into the mix as a 4.0 merge um, option. I've got Johnson in my team who was suspended, and of course, they kept a clean sheet on my luck. Uh, but what do you think uh, of Foss in particular? Yeah, um, not too much to talk about this game. It shows one that the Sunny Fuel, as has been talked about, they can keep clean sheets. Mm. Some result they have lost like a lot, but under the day they have quite a good defense. Mm. Um, and it's the first game this season, I think, that Olsen hasn't scored. So mm. credit to Sunny Fuel. Uh, quick shout out to Andy Martin, who I saw had uh, Foss in his team. Mm. Uh, and a lot of I don't think a lot of players have, if they have done their wild card, have been uh, get rid of Foss because Sanofield brought in another defender. I don't think Foss started the last game mm. and he was back now. So, uh, yeah, shout out to those owners who still have him. Um, but yeah, not much to talk about Olsen mm. struggling again. I don't think this will be a good season for them. And uh, yeah, Sanofield 1-0 win. Uh, but I don't think they yeah. either will do as well next game versus Wolfsburg. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, he could be an enabler, enabler if you want to go to a premium defender from yeah. Rosenborg, for example. He played every game for 90 minutes apart from the Brian game. He was subbed off at halftime. So he's yeah. pretty much still a nailed on. But the next fixtures are Rosenborg, Mion Dalin, Christiansen and Molda. I don't see more than zero or one clean sheet. Maybe Mjondalin they can't keep a clean sheet, but uh, yeah. maybe Rosenborg. <laughs> I will touch on it, but they were dreadful offensively. Uh, next game is pretty much the Classicos from Grotset and Mjondalin. Yeah. Um, what a game. Uh, McCannis saved a penalty, uh, but also Nakem scored a penalty as mm. a defender. But as you said, Brockman was off the, uh, the pitch, so it could be that he's still the main man. But yeah. Nakem increase his credit. So whenever we, he gets a penalty and the Brockman is not on the on pitch, I would rather have him than the other defenders probably. Well, what do you think? Yeah, uh, Storms is getting win. Nakim, he has been on some, I've seen him score some free kicks in training as well. So he could be on some set pieces actually. Uh, yeah. Although Brockman hasn't missed yet. So I think if he is on the pitch, he will take them. Um, Marva and Salvison uh, scoring, Maiga and Toxta assist. So, like all the yeah. offensive assets from Stromsko to delivering uh, again after that, maybe I think a lot of players have sold. That's uh, game week one. Um, that's game week one a dream to have Salvison and yeah. Maiga together. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's as you said, a derby. So, with a lot of chances and a good game to watch, it's mm. called like in Norway. River is the river going through the city, mm. and it's called Elv. So they call it Elv Classico, like uh, mm. the Barcelona Real Madrid game. But yeah, it was a good game. Uh, where that's, I have two defenders from this game. They concede two goals, and each player gets seven points. So I'll take that and move on to the next game. So yeah, very rare, very rare. All uh, right, uh, Valeringa keeps a clean sheet mm. uh, after some time against Harrison and uh, um, Haig. Um, the 4.0 backup kept a clean sheet. I underestimated him. I took him out on my rich uncle. Um, and he got, yeah, seven points. So um, mm. now you think that, um, I think I think that main goalkeeper, uh, Tyson is back, right? Tyson mm -hmm. is back. Yes, he's back. Do you, do you think there's a chance that Hayd will keep his place after this clean sheet? 
it's difficult to tell. Like it's hard to take out the goalkeeper who was has kept a clean sheet in the last game when he was subbed on, and yeah. in this game as well. Um, and Klaasen has made some like some mistakes in yeah. the time he's been playing, but. Fagumu said before the season, at least, that Klaasen was the number one goalkeeper. Mm. And he is like a big talent. But Hoog is not that old either. So, yeah, I, it's difficult to tell. Um, I would definitely have a second goalkeeper to Hoog if you have Hoog. Mm. So if he doesn't play, you have another goalkeeper coming in. But other than that, this game yeah. didn't happen as much. Uh, Wolleringa scored in the end. Stock, yes. Uh, who is playing striker on Wolleringa now? Williamson is down in like a forward midfield position. Mm. Uh, so that's something to look out for if you're a Williamson owner. Dunham was out, so maybe that was the reason for Wolleringa not creating too much. He will mm. be back for next game. Uh, but yeah, um, Wolleringa defense, solid. Um, but not that much others to take from this game. Yeah. Uh, what I would say here is that I myself uh, starting hate for next game week in the main 11 with Makani on the bench because he plays Budut Lemt. Mm. Just hoping that he uh, he gets a start. I, 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 like, I like their next fixture at least more than um, Hager. Also, the defenders, um, they have been doing really well. Uh, let me get the uh, defender name, Brock, Brock something. Uh, I think he's a right back. Brock Kremink, yeah. Brock Kremink, yeah. Kremink. And he's been he's been really doing really well. I think he gets some bonus points as well. So uh, if he's you look- He's set pieces as well. So yeah, he's a good, good pick. Yeah, so uh, 5.0, not that expensive, but you know, I think he's a good value. He can, yeah. he can, bring you some good value and they play Christiansen which is not uh, great but um, uh, Stromgross said afterwards more than other great brand and the, yeah so so you have one good one bad game week so yeah. if you have hate and he keeps his place it might be good rotation time with McCartney in my opinion yep. Um, odd. They also keep a clean sheet against the brand. I think this clean sheet is quite odd. <laughs> I did not expect it much, but that fits the name. Um, Bamba, uh, Krumsun, all of them are blanked. And um, Kasa is the only goal scorer in this game. Uh, how do you see Odd now after Borven? Do you think that they, fantasy-wise, they are attractive at the moment? Mm, yeah, as you said, their season as a whole has been quite odd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with uh, some, with, they lost the first game to San Nifu, then they won like 5 0 away to start, and 4 yeah. 1 against Wolringa, and then they yeah. have lost some games again. So it's hard to, to pick an asset from here. They, uh, in the last two game weeks, they have looked quite solid at the back, but uh, they are quite highly priced, and there are other defenses mm. who are better. Uh, but Kosa again. With the goal, he has been like under under the radar from Odd. He has scored some goals this season, and mm -hmm. uh, he plays like a winger role uh, as well. So he's quite far up the pitch, um, and he has been a known goal scorer for their second team in lower divisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe one to look out for, but uh, they're they're just too up and down for me to bring in someone from yeah. their team although I brought in Jorgensen but that will be like a bench for the real mm. yeah yeah and right. Brand disappointing again mm. scoring three goals against on the field a lot of players have Bamba and Komsun maybe and uh, they also have been uh, quite up and down this season mm. so yeah yeah Right, uh, Stabek uh, with 1-1 one, one draw against Salzburg. Uh, Wittlesen with a goal, Norman Hansen with an assist. Um, I think Wittlesen was really lively, as well as uh, Dvartsen. Uh, I think he could have had something, Dvartsen, in this game. Um, but uh, again, there are some some attacking returns from Stabek attack. Could be attractive, Wittlesen at 5.6 million. Uh, could be a fifth midfielder, perhaps. But however, we've got some news today. That a player from Rosenborg has moved on loan to Stabek. So tell us more about both him and what kind of role can he take uh, with Stabek? Yeah. yeah, I think it's a good uh, loan deal for both him. He has mm. uh, not really got a lot of game time since he moved to mm. Rosenborg. He's moving back to Stabek. He's in the same city he was before. Mm. So maybe he feels more like home. He has some good mates like Betlesen and others who yeah. he's good mates with. 
uh, has played in some uh, national games with them and under 21s and under 20s I believe so uh, yeah uh, he could be and he can play in a lot of different roles here I think he can play striker now I saw Mustin went off with injury for Starbeck yeah. so they need another striker there so I think he will play striker but he can also play uh, as a winger for them uh, but yeah he, I will wait and see because he is quite expensive I think he's like 7 million or something mm-hmm. but he could be a good signing for Stabæk for sure because they need a player who scores more goals because they don't create too much Stabæk and they yeah. need something up front yeah uh, the last game of the game week was a start against Rosenborg uh, Slamovic won yellow card that's more than his goals at the moment uh, mm-hmm. Daland with a yellow card but he managed to get 3 bonus points Mm-hmm. Um, and Ridian Jensen again with a bonus point. Um, uh, what, what do you think of, of Rosenberg as a whole? So, uh, basically, what I look at them is defenders who can keep it clean sheet but very premium prices. They don't offer a lot of attacking potential so far because there is no attack mm-hmm. at all in the team. Um, and and Borven now, uh, they also conceded 10 shots against Start, 5 on target, and they could possibly score in any other day. So I feel like that the defense was lucky, but yeah, they kept the three clean sheets. There is no question about that. Borven, he's been playing, I don't know, really. He's been playing deep or sometimes forward, sometimes in the wing. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if he had a shot. I did not check the stats, to be honest. But what do you think of Borven now? He's, had, he's having some defuse. Surely we have to keep him. Yeah. But I don't really think I will keep him after that because James is is a direct replacement, perhaps, um, and 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 he's in a much better team in a much better form. So, uh, well, what do you think in in Borven versus James? Yeah, we'll just like first of all with Rosenberg. I think it's quite simple for me. If you own some of their attacking players, I will keep for this game, and then sell. Yeah. And if you want to own a Rosenberg player after this game, I would say defense. If you still have your wild card or are willing to to transfer out the keeper, Fajalun is the cheapest option. Uh, yeah. And Hansen is out for some while, so he will get some games. Had five saves uh, yeah. last game, uh, played quite good. Uh, Valesvik also seems quite nailed on in that defense now. Uh, he's the other cheapest defender. But mm. yeah, I would if I if you want something from Rosenberg. I would suggest a defender, not an attacker. And for the Bowen versus James, as I said, uh, Bowen had good form, but in a new team, mm-hmm. they they don't have a new manager yet. Uh, they struggle. They have changed their formation. Like last game, he played on the left wing, Islamovic as a striker. This game, I think Islamovic played like a, a offensive midfielder behind. Uh, so they doesn't seem to find the system and then for Berwin to come in his new team I don't think it's difficult to him to adapt so James is more nailed on mm. he is in better form he plays for a better team so yeah it makes sense to make that move uh, mm. but I will also make the two go without both of them if you have Aikam and use the money to uh, elsewhere but, mm. uh, but yeah James over Berwin for sure yeah it's interesting then, uh, it will always remain the Ohi rotation to, to, to James. Yeah. There is always that like ghost behind the move. It's like, oh, but, but James, he might miss yeah. a start and come on in, off, off the bench. At least Borvin is a 90-minute man. But form is, is clearly is clearly for James' side. Anyway, um, let's go to the Dome Week 9 quickly and uh, look at the captains. And let's start by um, Budiglemt again against Myondal, and surely this time I will not see triple blank from Junker, uh, <laughs> Sinkernagel and uh, Heide if he's back or something. What, what do you think of, of Budoglemt? Are they still one of the best captain options? Yeah, and of course we will see the lineup, uh, so that yeah. helps a lot. Um, but the only thing is, Myondal is sort of the same team as Christian Sun. They have the same kind of manager that mm. they will probably park the bus. Uh, so then we have to for an early goal for Budeglim to open up the game. Yeah. Um, but if you look at the statistics from last season, this game ended 5-4 to Budeglim. Wow. Uh, with Evian scoring in the like, uh, 96th minute or something to win the game. Um, so it could be a lot of goals, but um, I just have a strange feeling that Myandal will 
uh, keep a clean sheet for a long time and maybe upload the game with just like a 1 0 victory or something like that. Yeah. Um, but of course, I thought that with Viking last game with Molde, and when Molde scored an early goal, you see what happened. So, yeah. of course, uh, we have to keep in mind the Budagin players as a good captaincy option this week. Yeah, yeah, and and Molde have probably uh, the better fixture against mm. uh, Strumgrosset, who we know defensively they are not great. Molde yeah. def- uh, offense is just very superior to them. Uh, so uh, James and and uh, Akram again. Um, I think they are the best captain picks yep. for this game week. The question is, uh, which one of them if you have both? Yeah, I agree. The, those are good. Uh, if you want to talk about differentials, I don't know if it's a differential, but of course, Bergen at home to Sanifu. We know mm. Sanifu, although they kept a clean sheet last time. Yeah. They have conceded a lot of goals recently. Mm. Um, so it could be a good fixture for Bergen. Uh, also, Brann is at home to start. We know Start was good defensively against Rosenberg and Brann was poor against us, so it doesn't really make sense. But mm. at home, Brann has been really good. Uh, so Bamba, Komsun could also be some good differentials. But yeah. again, as most of the weeks, um, more than both the players will be highly captain. We, of course, yeah. have Pellegrino as well mm-hmm. at home to Wolrenga. Chris uh, and Sun are usually good at home, but there we have two risks. Uh, Wolrenga is quite good in defense. Yeah. And it's uh, like three game, three days after the f- last game, so we don't know if Pelicano will start because that's like an uncertainty for every game week, and we won't yeah. get the lineup. So that's a risk. But if you want to take it, you could score big. Mm-hmm. Of course, I, I posted on Twitter this morning. Um, I was I was uh, in a dinner last last mm-hmm. evening, and uh, they brought a drink where it says Pellegrino. I was like, it's a <laughs> sign. It's a sign. I should captain him, and uh, mm-hmm. it's it's funny one. But um, yeah, Pellegrino is, is really good one. Uh, I, I think I think Ikram and and James are are ahead in my opinion. There are some yeah. differential captains, as you said, the brand uh, could be a good fixture. Oh, I don't know, Borven, if you are still believing in, in Rosenborg um, against Sandefjord, I, I still don't know. I was already fancying a lot of girls against Start and Sandefjord. Yeah. Now I think what well, Sandefjord are really solid defensively. It could be another Nenel. Um yeah. So I'm not sure. Um, uh, Vitlesen or Edvardsen, like a huge differential captain against a very bad t- defense defensive team, um, uh, Alisson. So it, it could be there, but it's way too risky in my opinion. But if you are um, if you are up for it, then why not? All right. So uh, moving on to the next sit- section, and I will I will just post here the um, uh, ownership for the top two, uh, top hundred. I will just um, mention the changes. So Makani on top uh, with thirty three percent. So almost one one to three basically. They have uh, Makani, Mira twenty five percent, Pedersen is still there twenty six percent, Bjornback twenty seven percent. Hans Olsen, 30%, Sulheim, 32%, and Vogt, 55%. So it's very dominant between Molde and, and um, Stabek. Uh, mainly Fodars as Vogt or uh, Premium, like Hans Olsen and Sulheim. So uh, Sulheim, uh, interestingly, he's playing as a center back uh, for the last two or three game weeks, I believe. And he will continue to be there as long as I think the other center back, um, Amankwa, I think he's out. So it feels like he yes. his attacking potential has dropped a lot. Um, so I'm not sure. Uh, Jonathan versus uh, Vogt is still a rotation risk. So I think you you've got to go Hans Olsen. He's, he's he's approaching six million. Is that what? People are uh, the market is clearly affected by it. Single angle one hundred and fifty two percent. Usually captain last game week. Icrum one hundred twenty-two percent. Peruino eighty-two percent. Hager is still low on uh, by the way, forty-one percent. Mm. Uh, Salitros emerged as a new best fifth midfielder or highest fifth midfielder, I would say, thirty-two point three percent. Juncker one hundred and fourteen percent. Borven sixty-three percent, and Ibrahim Shaibo twenty point eight percent. So there is that mix now. Um, and as you can see here, uh, James is not even in, in under 20%. Um, so who brought him in Rich Uncle who owns him still made a lot of benefit from last game week. So, yeah. And next, I will show the captaincy from last game week. Singer Nigel was captained by about 55%. So 
whatever happens, we've been all in the same boat. Yonkral as well, second best captain, second highest captain, uh, 23%. Borven then less than 10%, and the rest just below mm. 8%. So there's no massive difference because no, no captain has made a lot of points, like Akram, six points. Um, that's five points difference, so it's all right. Uh, so it was a good game week uh, if you've got your captain blank because mm. you didn't get affected too much, I would say. Uh, moving on to the next section is about the next three to five fixtures. Which teams have the best fixtures offensively and defensively? So, uh, Jakob, uh, update, update us on the uh, teams with the best fixtures. Yeah, uh, of course, there is some changes uh, to this and of course, uh, the big one, uh, yeah. next game week, we have Molde versus Bulglimt. So a lot of us will have like five or six players in this game. Um, and of course, also we are uh, closing in on the game week, double game week mm. uh, in the round 12 for yeah. Molde. And uh, Start will have two games each. Um, I think still Rosenborg have, uh, especially for defense, have quite good fixtures. Sandefjord, Haugesund, Viking and Odd, and Sarsborg, not really teams that score a lot. And after that as well, um, mm. we have teams who, they have teams who not score, so that could be good. Uh, Bode Glimpse fixtures after the Molde game is really good. Um, same for Molde uh, mm. also. Um, but to find some other teams that have great fixtures, I think for na the next two game weeks, we have Stabæk, mm. who have Ålesund and Start, um, is uh, good. And also Odd, who have Sarsborg and Ålesund and Mjøndal in the next three. Uh, those are some teams mm. I want to uh, take forward. And of course, none of us own a lot of Sunnyfjord, but they probably have the most difficult fixtures uh, ahead. Yeah. Uh, very nice. And um, all right, so if we go to the next issue, which is about the questions uh, from the community, we've got a lot of questions. So uh, apologies if I don't mention all of them. We've covered a lot of them uh, uh, during the, the, the video, mainly the uh, Borven versus James, uh, Aikram versus Hossein, uh, what to do with, uh, for example, the um, Budget Limit uh, assets. We've just uh, touched on it as well. Um, uh, we've got uh, two more questions, just uh, want to cover it. Uh, mm. uh, let me see where we've got here. Um, Ola Mila is asking, he still has uh, Mygard and Sandberg. Do they keep <laughs> or sell? I think that's a sell. I think there are a lot of options emerged. I think uh, both. Uh, yeah. Maybe keep, if you want to sell one of those first, I would sell uh, Mygard. Yeah. Because um, Sandberg has Viking at home, so mm. it could be good. Uh, but yeah, definitely sell for both of them because none of them seem to be in yeah. form and Mygar even missed the penalty, so yeah. Yeah, uh, one more question from FBL Dempsey is asking, he's really starting with the forwards this season. Um, which which ones we have to take a look at? We just You just mentioned the fixture, so I think James, uh, now or after one game week if you have Borven, yeah. I think you still have to have some faith in uh, Junkar. Yep. Um, and uh, any 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 other names uh, perhaps uh, like? Maybe if you like, if, if you have those two, you maybe need a, a slightly cheaper striker. Uh, so maybe boot him for Stabæk if he mm -hmm. is back uh, for those next three fixtures. Yeah. Uh, I would also maybe mention uh, the likes of Lauritz and Obekenga from Odd. Yeah. Because they have some nice fixtures as well. But especially James and Junko is mm. uh, the mo two most informed strikers. Yeah. Uh, and I think three five two or four four two is the best um, mm -hmm. currently. I, we can't have a three outstanding strikers. Another at the moment. differential, like quickly mentioned, is yeah. Fred Jonsson from Olsen, right. who's also have been looking quite good. Recently. He, he scored quite a few draws. Yeah. Right. So uh, moving on to the last section of the video is about uh, our team. So I'll put uh, your team, Jakob. Um, yeah. Akram captain. Uh, your vice captain is Junkra. Tell us your plans and if you use any transfer. Yeah, uh, this is the best team, as it's called. Uh, think it will stay like this. Mm. Uh, although uh, Gregerson will probably move out of the team uh, yeah. for the Rosenberg defender because mm. they have more than 0.6 million in the bank. Yeah. Other than that, uh, as we discussed, it will be between uh, Bode Glimt and um, Akram for captaincy. Yeah. And this is also Bourbon's last chance. Uh, 
to show something. Um, and I hope Hoag is back. He was only out with illness, so probably will be back. So yeah, that's my one move before this. Yeah next week and we hope that Vogt comes back in a very good fixture mm. as well against Alisson that's a good potential for a clean sheet as well uh, my team is uh, full of flags um, so I've got hate in, in goal in the hope that he, he plays uh, otherwise McCann will just come in with whatever he gets um, yeah. I've got a triple uh, booted limit as they are um, I will make the transfers for sure, uh, in the back line. Uh, uh, depends on the news, depends on what happens. Uh, Grierson will go, Aspak might go, um, and uh, might take a hit. Dallant can come off if Peterson misses out. So, uh, a lot of options here to, to consider. But Akram is pretty much my captain, I would say. That's yeah. very good fixture. Um, Pellegrino and Salitros as well. So, uh, we'll see. Right, Jakob, uh, thanks very much for joining me, and uh, good luck in the next game week. Thank you very much, Cam. Yeah. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. And uh, apologies again for the viewers. And hopefully we come back live in the next game week. Ciao.